14 حالة وفاة و For over 47 days, settings of supporters of former President Morsi were at Trouble Al Adawiya intersection in Cairo's Nasser City and Nahda Square in Giza. They plugged vital roads in residential areas, causing severe hardships for local residents, and bombarded them around the clock with chants and speeches from loudspeakers. <laughs> Residents of Rabah filed many chores and claims to the Attorney General requesting the state to disperse the citizens. The National Defense Council was greatly concerned about the national security due to the citizens neglecting the basic consideration of the Egyptian national security. The citizens had also a severe negative impact on the already adversely affected tourism industry. So, the military services issued numerous calls to Morsi supporters urging them to refrain from violence and stay away from military facilities. The security forces assured the protesters safe passage and no pressing of charges to those who leave the city, yet they refused to leave. وترويعٍ غير مقبول للمواطنين وتكليف السيد وزير الداخلية باتخاذ كل ما يلزم في إطار أحكام الدستور والقانون Millions of Egyptian people took to the streets and main squares across the country rejecting terrorism, indiscriminate violence, and the hate-inciting speeches and incitement. A popular mandate was given to the state to deal with the citizens. The government could only listen to the millions in the streets freely expressing themselves and meet those demands. At 6.45 in the morning on August 14, 2013, police forces had been deployed surrounding the sit-in protesters of Rab al Adawiya and Nahda in preparation to disperse all citizens. Before the operation started, the police forces used public address systems and called upon the pro morsi supporters to end their sit-in and put their country's interests and security first. Police forces pledged not to press charge against the protesters except the ones already wanted for other crimes. Knowing that the citizens were to be shortly dispersed, the pro Morsi supporters barricaded themselves with barriers of sand and concrete, similar to those used during the 1973 war, to face the Egyptians and policemen as if they became their enemies. <laughs> Morsi's supporters threatened a nationwide bloodbath and killing of police and army personnel. They refused to heed the calls for reason and clashed with the policemen, throwing stones and firing at the police. During the dispersal operation, security forces uncovered numerous weapons and Molotov cocktails at post squares. Many suspects were arrested. 
An arrested protester threatened they will burn down the country while other protesters burned down their tents and belongings before the sentence dispersal began. Improvised explosive devices were discovered at Traba, where they were securely stopped by palm squads. Police investigators have found dead bodies buried inside the mosque of Rabah with obvious signs of torture and other bodies shrouded in body bags in preparation for burial under the stage where the Brotherhood leadership gave their speeches. The images of the events were clear and were broadcasted to the world. Yet an American newspaper like New York Times dared to allege that it became clear that the ruling generals in Egypt have no intentions or interest in directing their countries towards a democracy gain. Health officials declared that the relatives of the dead from Rabah refused autopsies. The Muslim Brotherhood militias destroyed the properties of the people. After the armed protesters were dispersed, Muslim Brotherhood armed militias initiated a series of synchronized attacks on police stations, army facilities, government offices, and churches everywhere in Egypt. They set them on fire. The arson was designed to cripple the country and destroy utilities and infrastructure. In Kurdasa, a town in Giza, supporters of Morsi attacked a police precinct and killed 11. Eight officers and three civilians lost their lives. In a gruesome scene, they mutilated their bodies and dragged them throughout the town streets. They plugged the major roads and streets, including Gamat al Dawal al Arabiya, opened fire on police and citizens. and brutally assaulted and beat a police officer and dragged him in the street. <laughs> After besieging the Giza Governorate Administrative Building in Haram Street, the Muslim Brotherhood and Morsi supporters stormed the building, then set it on fire, terrorizing the residents of the area. The perpetrators fled in cars awaiting for them. The Brotherhood also set fire to the Ministry of Finance building. With the intent of destroying ancient Egyptian heritage, the Muslim Brotherhood burned down the Malawi Museum in Minya, Upper Egypt, dropping all the precious artifacts and damaging the famous statue of Egypt Renaissance in Giza. Egypt's largest newspaper published headlines stating the Muslim Brotherhood militias destroy the properties of the people. Although the supporters of the Muslim Brotherhood were armed, the police granted them a safe passage from the citizens at post Rabah Adawiya and Nahda. They also provided safe exits for the citizens' protesters at Al Fatah Mosque. Only protesters involved in violence were arrested. من رابع العدوية أعداد تقدر بالمئات الآن تخرج من هذا الاعتصام. Questions remain surrounding the large cache of weapons found at Rabah and Nahda. Where did the Brotherhood get them from? Had the Muslim Brotherhood already started executing their plan of having their own armed forces? And we saw all kinds of weapons. Someone like me wouldn't know all these weapons, nor their names and type of polytude, as seen by the viewers. Dozens of churches were attacked, looted and burned, mainly in Asyut and Minya in Upper Egypt. مصر وقليل والمرة دي مش مقصود الكنائس مش مقصود الأقبار هو مقصود الكل مقصود مصر كلها عشان كده احنا جزء من المشهد مشهد الاعتداء على مصر أماكن عديدة كنائس عديدة كل مكان طالته ايديهم اعتدوا فيه على مصر 
the Maspiro Yas Union issued a report documenting 61 attacks on churches, followed by Islamic prayers taking place in three of those churches. Additionally, six schools and 58 Christian homes were burned. Many abhor most of the attacks on churches and arson. Pro Morsi supporters set the Church of Saint Mina in Minya on fire, along with the Evangelical Church in Beni Mazar and a Baptist church. Two river pools were set on fire, one of which was owned by an Evangelical church, resulting in two workers died after suffering from severe burns. In spite of this bleak scene, there are pride spots. Muslim neighbors provided protection to the pastor of the Methodist Church in Minya from being attacked by the Muslim Brotherhood. In the village of Matai, Almenia, Muslims protected the Church of St. Castor. The Muslim youth offered to protect the churches by standing in circles around them. The Christian youth responded that churches can be rebuilt but we cannot compensate human souls. Pope Tawadros response to the acts of violence was, all churches are a simple sacrifice for Egypt, and we will happily make this sacrifice for our beloved Egypt. The Muslim Brotherhood confirmed the responsibility for the burning of the churches after the certain protest had been dispersed at Rab al Adawiyah and in Nahda. They tried to justify their violence claiming that Pope Tawadros II incited Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, Egypt's Minister of Defense, to remove President Morsi, and their actions were just a reaction. In an official statement, the Coptic Orthodox of the Church affirmed its rejection of any foreign intervention in Egyptian affairs, and its unwavering support for all Egyptian institutions facing armed violence and terrorism. The Friday of Death and Terror the Muslim Brotherhood threatened to burn all of Egypt. After Friday prayers on the 16th of August 2013, several armed men of the Muslim Brotherhood started a march heading to Ramses Square. During the march, the Brotherhood committed all kinds of violence, including opening random fire on residents of Burak and Ain Shams. Police forces bravely held off Brotherhood militias, trying to burn police stations, while at the same time, Cairo was turning into a war zone. Dozens of people were killed and injured by the gunshots of the Brotherhood nationwide. Egypt's Grand Mufti declared that carrying arms in a demonstration could not be considered peaceful, stressing that efforts to divide the country by inciting sectarian violence will never succeed in dividing the Egyptian people. The Brotherhood used Molotov cocktails to set fire to homes and an Arab contractor's building in Ramses Square, which got completely burned down with fire, which also spread to an adjacent blood bank. Egyptian activists worked online collecting signatures to a petition calling on a pan of the Muslim Brotherhood as a terrorist organization. Security forces have arrested more than a thousand members of the armed Muslim Brotherhood, as well as Salafi jihadist Muhammad al-Zawahri, the brother of Ayman al-Zawahri, the leader of Al-Qaeda after Osama bin Laden. A number of senior Muslim Brotherhood leaders were also arrested. Enemy combatants of different nationalities in Egypt. Security forces in Egypt have arrested many armed foreigners during the violent clashes. After the attack on the Azbakaya police precinct, a Pakistani terrorist was arrested. An armed Turk was also arrested in Fatah Mosque in the Ramses Square area. Who are these? 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 Who are these?
جاي لنا من انهي كوكب تاني من انهي مصيبه اتحدفوا علينا ده تدخل اجنبي هي دي الاخوان اللي مش هقدر اقول للمسلمين هم دول الاخوان دي الرجاله اللي هم جايبينهم بيستعينوا بالاجنبي علينا احنا Protesters of the Muslim Brotherhood and their allies hijacked broadcast vans owned by the National Egyptian Television. They abused it to the benefit of many false information, stirring television channels on top of which are Al Jazeera Egypt lies. The Egyptian people's wealth belongs to us. I will be returning to the Egyptians. I hope to God that nothing major here which is the least is at the cost of thousands of dollars, has been removed or taken. Because this car, if you may not already know, costs at least a million Egyptian pounds. Al Jazeera and their likes ran fabricated reports, aired on a loop, hate inciting rhetoric many times over, as well as misrepresenting pro-Morsi and anti-Morsi demonstrations and marches. Al Jazeera even went as far as to claim that military forces fired tear gas at the sit-in protesters inside Fatah Mosque. Some international media offered unwavering support and pious to the Muslim Brotherhood. International headlines conveniently overlooked reports of the use of women and children as human shields by the Muslim Brotherhood during the march and protests. They decided not to mention or report on the lynching and killing of police officers in Kurdasa, as well as not showing the images of the burning churches on any international news channel. And the nations whom strongly advocate human rights failed to condemn these heinous actions. Egypt fighting terrorism alone. Egypt has tried relentlessly to find a peaceful solution to the crisis without success to both local and international initiatives. <laughs> At the same time, many countries tried exerting pressure and attempted to interfere in ways unheard of in support of the terrorist group that is the Muslim Brotherhood. This perceived support made the Muslim Brotherhood turn down all calls for non-violence and initiatives for a political solution. Their refusal to answer to any of the initiatives and consistent escalation of actions against the country and the Egyptian society rendered all peaceful proposals a failure. نحن لسنا المتحكمين في الأرض لكن هذا الذي يحدث في سيناء ردا على هذا الانقلاب العسكري يتوقف في الثانية التي يعلن فيها عبد الفتاح السيسي أنه تراجع عن هذا الانقلاب وأنه صحح الوضع ورده إلى أهله وأن الرئيس يعود إلى سلطاته أنا نفسي أعرف وزير الداخلية جاب الرجولة دي منين وجاب من إمتى بقى راجل يعني Egyptians have discovered their true supporters both amongst the Arab countries and beyond and on the other hand, they came to know who is supporting terrorism. As Egypt has declared its sovereignty over its internal matters and refusal of any interference by whomever to break its progress in the war on terrorism. What Egypt is going through today is nothing but the darkest moment of the night before sunrise. And she has praised herself for the history maker and the pioneer of all history she is. Egypt has withstood in the face of the terror and horrors that many other countries and nations have faced and broken the many shackles on the road to freedom and rise to proper and exemplary humanitarianism. The Egyptians will gain victory over terrorists and violence, the grounds of the union of the Egyptians whom have finally realized who their true enemies are. سلام من قلب الله كون يا بلد
I'm